Hi, my name is Jason Moore. I'm a professor of informatics and director of the Institute for Biomedical Informatics here at Penn Medicine. My research program is focused on the development, evaluation, and application of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms and software for understanding and improving human health. You can find out more about my lab at epistasis.org or by contacting me at the email address shown on the slide. I see human health very much as a complex adaptive system. At the bottom of this figure, we have many components. Think of these as genes, proteins, metabolites, microbes, environmental factors. All of these factors interact in time and space and produce what are called control structures. Think of these as biochemical pathways, for example. Biochemical pathways interact with each other in a hierarchical manner to produce a complex system, and it's this complex system that ultimately determines our health. If we wanna understand health, we need to not only be able to measure the components, but we have to understand all their complex interactions through this complex hierarchical structure. Now it's an exciting time because we can measure lots of different kinds of data uh, on humans. We can measure genomes, epigenomes, proteomes, microbiomes, et cetera. And we can now combine a lot of this omics data with clinical data from the electronic health record, including things like imaging and mobile health data. You could throw in social media data, for example. So the big question is, how do we put all these pieces together in the context of health as a complex system? And for this, I think we need artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. Now, this is how I think about the machine learning pipeline, going from data on the left through data integration, feature selection, feature engineering, machine learning, interpretation, validation, and ultimately clinical application. So what I would like to do is quickly highlight 10 challenges of working with machine learning in the healthcare space and how we've addressed some of these challenges. One of the first big questions when doing machine learning is what machine learning method do you use? And each machine learning method looks at the data in a different way. And how do you know when you start an analysis which machine learning method is ideal for detecting the unknown patterns in your data? Over the last five years, we've been working in a hot new area called automated machine learning. In other words, getting the computer to figure out the ideal machine learning method and the parameters that are right for your data set. We developed one of the very first automated machine learning methods, the Tree-Based Pipeline Optimization Tool, or Teapot, and have published a series of papers showing that Teapot can automatically construct a complex pipeline with different types of pre-processing algorithms, machine learning algorithms to analyze a particular data set. Shown on this slide is a paper we just published in Bioinformatics. This is work done by my postdoc, Trang Li, and my programmer, Wei Shan Fu. Uh, scaling our tree-based automated machine learning method to big data. And one of the things that Trang and Wei Shan did was create a feature subset selector that can be included in the automatically generated machine learning pipelines. And the basic idea here is to take a big data set, like a genome-wide association study, and uh, cut it up into small pieces or subsets. So for example, you might group SNPs by genes or by pathways, and then the algorithm can select those subsets to include in a machine learning analysis, thereby making the machine learning more computationally efficient, and on the back end, once you have a model or a pipeline that works well, it helps with the interpretation because the subsets were selected in a biological manner. Teapot is uh, programmed in Python, it's open source and freely available on GitHub. I'm a big believer in feature selection. You don't wanna throw all the variables, all the features at a machine learning algorithm, and that's particularly important with big data. So you might want to start by selecting a subset of features. You can do that algorithmically using algorithms such as the relief F method shown here, which we've done a lot of work on, or you could do it biologically. For example, picking genes or pathways to feed into a machine learning algorithm if you're doing a genome-wide association study. I'm also a big believer in feature engineering. The data doesn't always come to us in the right format. Sometimes it needs to be recoded or features need to be combined. And we've worked on automated methods for 
figuring out the best ways to combine features. This is work done by Bill LaCava, a research associate in the lab. This is his feature engineering automation tool, or FEAT, which automatically combines features with mathematical functions to produce new features that can be included in things like linear regression. I'm also very interested in reproducibility. I think this is a very important topic, especially in machine learning, um, where um, machine learning results can often be specific to a particular data set and might not reproduce across multiple data sets or in other people's hands uh, with different operating systems, different parameter settings, et cetera. So these are uh, two commentary review type papers that I've been involved with this past year or so uh, on some recommendations to enhance reproducibility in biomedical research. Because we develop a lot of novel machine learning algorithms, we're very interested in benchmarking, which is the process of selecting known real data sets or simulated data sets to test your method on and compare it to other methods. And picking the right benchmarks can be, uh, can be challenging. This is a paper that we just po posted on Archive, a paper I collaborated on with a bunch of other co-authors, thinking about best practices and open issues and benchmarking. And we are actively developing artificial intelligence tools for developing better machine learning benchmarks. This is an example of a, a benchmark that we're getting ready to release in a few weeks. Um, the, what we do here is use an AI algorithm to identify mathematical functions shown in the left figure that generate data such that we maximize the variability of the performance of different machine learning algorithms. We have 40 such benchmarks that we've developed with different orderings and different variability of machine learning performance. And this then provides a very rich set of benchmarks to test and evaluate a new machine learning on because you, you can compare that machine learning method with the performance of other machine learning methods, see where it falls, identify those data sets where your machine learning method might not do well, and then you can see the generative mathematical functions and do more studies with them. We're also very interested in interpretation. This is perhaps one of the most challenging areas of machine learning. This is work done by my postdoc, Trang Lee. This is an R package that we developed called Tree Heater, which combines heat maps for visualizing features and outcomes with machine learning models so that you can get a much better idea about what's going on in the model itself. We uh, evaluate machine learning algorithms commonly with objective measures, things like accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, um, but there are also a whole bunch of important subjective measures, and these are outlined in a review article shown on the left side from 2006. Um, subjective measures can include things like, is the result surprising? Is it novel? Is it useful? Is it actionable? And I think these things are very important in the field of medicine. On the right is an example of a paper we did a few years ago using this idea of interestingness, this subjectivity where we ran a machine learning algorithm multiple times, we looked in to see what features it was selecting, and then we told the algorithm to probabilistically use those features in a preferential manner and then tracked it over time and saw that over time, the machine learning method did indeed hone in on the most important features. And so this is a, a, an, an example of a measure of subjective interestingness. We are hand selecting the features that we think are important and telling the algorithm that it should pay more attention to them. I'm also a big believer that machine learning and artificial intelligence should be easy and it should be accessible to anybody that wants to use it. Right now, there's a huge barrier to using machine learning uh, by non-experts. This is a tool that we developed over the last few years called Pen AI. You can get more information at penai.org. And this project was really designed to deliver machine learning to the masses so that anybody can do machine learning. A two-year-old can do machine learning with Pen AI. All you have to do is load your data set as a CSV file, push the AI button, and the computer takes over and does the machine learning for you. And we have uh, an automated machine learning algorithm built into this that learns from experience and gets better with time as it experiences more and more machine learning analyses. But you can also do an interactive machine learning uh, analysis shown in the left bottom part of this panel. Uh, and we have a ni <clears throat> nice dashboard shown uh, in the right side of this panel. Uh, Pen AI is open source. It's available on GitHub. 
And we have a paper that was just accepted in bioinformatics doing a very thorough evaluation of this and showing that it's competitive. Not only is it easy to use, but it's competitive with the best automated machine learning tools that are out there. Another big concern uh, with machine learning and AI, especially in medicine, is fairness and bias. If you feed a machine learning algorithm biased data, it will produce biased results. And even worse, it will capitalize on that bias to produce an even more biased result. We have two experts in this area here at Penn. Michael Kearns and Aaron Roth just published a book shown on the left of the slide called The Ethical Algorithm, highly recommended. And we've started to dabble in this area ourselves. This is on the right side is work done by Bill LaCava, research associate in the lab on um, FAIR machine learning classifiers. And this work was just presented at the Genetic and Evolutionary Computation Conference and Bill won a Best Paper Award for it. So this is a kind of a hot up and coming area. And finally, we want to incorporate machine learning results back into a health system to improve healthcare. And this feeds into what we call a learning health system, which is something I'm very interested in. How do we take patient data build machine learning models, validate those models, and then incorporate them into the healthcare process to improve uh, the health of our patients. So this is uh, a challenging area, uh, a new area, uh, and an area where we, we have a lot of work to do. So I've presented um, a number of challenges for machine learning and AI in the healthcare domain, and I see each of these as very important research opportunities, and all of these make great research projects for graduate students. So if you're interested, um, please contact me. My email address is shown here on the slide. Uh, here's our webpage again, and I'm on Twitter, at morejh. And I look forward to meeting you and possibly working with you.